It doesn't matter if you're a big boy or an itty bitty boy. If you think that body shaming Lizzo is good content, then you're not 100% that bitch. You're just a bitch. And if that truth hurts, then you deserve to develop a peanut allergy and get pushed to the floor of a Texas Roadhouse waiting area. I'm sure that will feel good as hell. And Lizzo, if you're watching this, f the haters. You are a queen. They couldn't f it up to the tempo if they wanted to. Mm. Chapter 2. The Psychology of the Simp Analogously to the question of the chicken and the egg, one has to ask himself when dissecting the simp exactly which is the causal factor in this clearly symbiotic relationship. Orthodox simp theory will have you believe that it is only through the cultural manufacturing of the thought that the simp can manifest. However, this fails to maintain its structural integrity both in theory and practice, for it is demonstrably correct that given the law of female obedience, the thought can only manifest once the simp has provided a path of lesser resistance for the necessary siphoning of external gratification. It is precisely because of this relationship that all efforts to cure the modern strain of thoughtery must originate with the simp, but more importantly, with the cognitive deviation of society which has allowed for the simp to migrate from atypical cringe to the elevated platform of normalcy and, even in more unfortunate cases, promotion. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. Do you ever wonder why men have become so feminine? Why testosterone is dropping so much in the West? Well, I hope you've been wondering because it's a serious problem that no one really seems to be talking about. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, but yeah, did you like that excerpt that I shared with you from my new book? The other day I was bored and so I decided to start outlining a book because it's all been very tiresome recently with all the simps and with all the thoughts and so and like obviously it's a joke right when we talk about like thought patrol and simping and never e-girls like it's basically said as a joke but what's important to remember is that like all good jokes there was a large degree of truth behind them and so we're going to talk about what simps are what they do uh we're going to talk about what causes people to become simps and there's not like one reason for it but i think there are a few that are important to acknowledge things like declining testosterone, what's causing that specifically, uh, social media, lack of fathers, and I've got data for all of that, but that being said, it's also important to understand that there is a difference between a reason for something and an excuse for something. So we'll talk about why simping is bad, uh, then we'll talk about how to stop simping, and that includes how to stop being a simp and also how to stop others from being simps. But yeah, you saw the beginning of this video. These men are absolutely insufferable and cringe. And it's like, we can point and laugh, but if people are only perceiving this to be a joke, then they're ignoring the problem, but also the gravity of the implications of what's causing this behavior from men. So we'll start with the video for now. But if it gets worse, who knows? We might have to author a treatise against this type of behavior. Working title is Never E-Girls, The Case Against Simping. And this, of course, covers a broad range of subjects. Chapter one, why never e-girls? Chapter two, the psychology of the simp. Chapter three, the psychology of the thought. Chapter four, the fallacy of spare coochie. Spare coochie, spare coochie, ma'am. Chapter 5, How to Restore the Family. Chapter 6, The Nobility of Thought Patrol. Chapter 7, Abstinence is Epic. Chapter 8, Know Your Role. Chapter 9, On Becoming the Gamer. And Chapter 10, Conclusion. It's going to be a real page turner. We're going to get Nick to write the foreword. It's going to dominate the hardcover nonfiction list for like the better part of a decade. But again, we don't want it to come to that if at all possible. So we're mainly going to focus on simps right now, but we might talk about thoughts in another video. But for those of you who don't know, a simp is a guy like the ones you saw at the beginning. The best way to think of it is like a guy who is whipped, but it's even worse because he's not even with the girl. These are guys that orbit girls online. They shower them with attention, validation, compliments, just hoping and praying that one day she's going to realize what a nice guy I am and how I've always been there for her. And then she's going to want me. It's like, OK, that's what a simp is by definition. But there are also guys that white knight for women. You know, like if you're at a party and you make a joke about some girl and she laughs at it, but then this other guy comes up. Don't you ever disrespect a woman like that in front of me, bro. You better apologize right now. And it's stop. Like, and that's not to say that disrespecting women is okay, but you know the guys I'm talking about. These are guys that unnecessarily defend these women because they think that it's going to score points with them. And it's always cringe and every man sees right through it. 
Male feminists are a great example of white knights. And you might remember I've said before that there was no such thing as an honest male feminist, and that's true. And we'll get into that in a bit more detail in a second. But basically my thesis is that single mothers in social media, aided by an unprecedented decline in testosterone, have created a generation of weak men, and this often manifests as becoming a simp. And let me be clear, when I say that like single mothers have helped create this, that's not necessarily their fault or it's not necessarily that they did this intentionally. It's just an acknowledgement that mothers are mothers and they cannot be fathers. And those roles are decidedly different. Of course, there are exceptions, right? There always are, but exceptions do not override overwhelming tendencies, which can be substantiated with mountains of data. So the reason we're gonna talk about the effects of boys not having fathers present first um, is because the effects of that are much harder to reverse, assuming that they can even be reversed, right? Um, and as compared to the general decline in testosterone levels on average. And so one of the biggest reasons for that is that the relationship that you have with your dad is what socializes you as a child and teaches you to push yourself to your limits. And your testosterone levels can actually respond positively to this. For example, um, if you take two men and you measure their testosterone levels before a competition, if you measure them again after the competition, the man who won the competition will measure higher than previously. And the man who lost the competition will measure lower than previously and having higher testosterone gives you a greater chance of competing successfully in general as we'll talk about so you can actually create a positive feedback loop like this when you're succeeding uh, so you succeed your testosterone increases and you succeed more you're more likely to etc etc but this can't happen if you don't have the foundation present which comes from your dad without that foundation you're not going to be socialized you're not going to want to push yourself to your limits and you won't have discipline or self-control and you won't develop a capacity for empathy and again these are observed tendencies not rules obviously there are exceptions and you can overcome obstacles, but let's remember that obstacles exist for these young men in the first place, right? So we've seen that the amount of time that a father spends with a child is one of the strongest predictors of empathy in adulthood. And the reason for that is that the dad enforces the boundaries. Moms tend to set more boundaries, but dads tend to be the ones who actually enforce them. So a mom might say that your bedtime is 9 p.m., but you can 15 more minutes your way into 9.45 pretty easily, right? But if a dad says that your bedtime is 9 p.m., guess when bedtime is? It's 9 p.m. And so what that does is it teaches the child to respect boundaries. And by teaching them to respect boundaries and treat them seriously, you're teaching them to respect the needs of others. Now, what moms bring to the table is the understanding that children need empathy, which is very important. But because moms are less likely to enforce boundaries, that empathy can be used against them without the presence of a father. So basically... Empathy is a virtue, and mothers are empathetic and nurturing towards their children by nature. But if that only goes from parent to child without requiring reciprocity from the child, then it's going to become a vice. And what dads help with is drawing a line between empathizing with the child and being controlled by the desires of that child. And so without that presence, the child is going to try to exploit the empathetic and nurturing instincts of the mother to satisfy their own desires. And they're quite often very successful at that. And so... This ends up teaching the child to be emotionally manipulative towards people because they lack that empathy because they were never taught it. And just as important in the relationship between fathers and their children is how they interact with each other through activities. Kids need to roughhouse. We've seen that studies of baby rats that engaged in rough and tumble activity find that they become less aggressive and have more social skills as adults. And the same is true of kids. Firstly, because it teaches them that they're not fragile. They have some confidence in themselves. Like they fall off the couch and they're like, wow, that didn't even hurt that bad. I'm basically Superman, right? Like stuff like that. But they also realize their own capacity to hurt other people, which is arguably just as important because it's like, okay, well, Johnny, your sister doesn't want to play with you anymore because you smacked her in the head with a pirate sword. And so you kind of think to yourself, okay, well, I like playing with my sister. So I guess if I want to keep playing with her, I should probably avoid uh, smacking her in the head with my pirate sword in the future. And dads are the ones that facilitate that type of play because moms don't really like it. Right, Roughhousing tends to scare mothers because not only is she fearing for the safety of her children, but then that's amplified because she looks at dad and she's like, oh, great. He's behaving like a child, too. Like, you know, she'll she'll come in because she hears screaming. She runs in and it's just you, your dad and your sister. And you're all just beating each other with N4 swords. And you all just kind of pause and like look at mom like a deer in the headlights. Uh, but playing with dad is fun because it's like a roller coaster. Like, it's exciting because you know you're safe. Dad might be throwing you into water or a pile of leaves. Maybe he's got you sitting on his shoulders while walking around downtown. Maybe he's throwing you off his shoulders onto your bed. A lot of dad stuff is just throwing your child. Very important component. But while that's happening, the kid is having fun because he or she knows that dad is still protecting them despite the appearance of potential harm or danger. And kids need that to develop properly. 
If you're not hitting your son with the people's elbow on a bi-weekly basis, you're an unfit parent is basically the points I'm making. They need to get out of their comfort zone to develop properly. And whether it's stuff like that or in school, sports, whatever it may be, dads are typically the ones that push a kid to their limits. Because when kids are upset or crying in front of their mom, that nurturing instinct kicks in and moms decide, well, you know, they're done with whatever it is that's causing that. And dads don't really see why the crying or being upset has to stop the activity. So then moms think that they're being more dismissive than they're being nurturing. But it's very important for kids to learn that losing once doesn't mean giving up, whether that's skinning your knee, crying about it, getting back on the bike, not beating Quentin Beck at rounding up bad guys, taking a break to go cry about it, but then going back and beating the level because dad pulled up the strategy guide. That's a true story. Kids need to learn that failure one time does not have to be permanent. We've seen that toddlers whose dads encouraged exploring while setting limits had better social and emotional skills later in life. And this is absolutely crucial. And it tends to be dad's job. And what's really tragic is that in cases of divorce, assuming that the kids still get to see their dad, dads will neglect this type of behavior out of fear that the children will tell their mother and then she'll go tell a psychologist or the courts or both and then his time with the kids will be jeopardized. Or if he does this type of stuff and you know he tells the kids, you know, don't tell your mom about it, then she might find out and then she's gonna just amplify that because she thinks that he's hiding stuff from her and it's just messy because unfortunately divorces often result in a lot of aftershock and bad blood at the expense of the kids. But kids need both parents. Kids need a mom, kids need a dad because sometimes dads take it too far. Sometimes moms do have to step in like, hey, don't do that with them. But that's where the compromise is. Like one time I was seven and I climbed, I kid you not, like four stories up in this tree at my aunt's house. No one knew about it until I was up there, but still. So my dad comes out and he was like, John, are you up there? And I was like, hi, dad. And he was like, okay, probably time to come down. And I was like, okay. And that's good because if he had freaked out, like my mom probably would have like, oh my God, what are you doing up there? I would have been like, oh my God, what am I doing up here? I probably would have like fallen down or something. That would not have been good. So whatever, maybe I shouldn't have been that high in the tree. You, you get the point, right? Like when kids are in a situation, they're kind of paying attention to how their parents are reacting to it. And they tend to let that influence how they're reacting to the situation. And all this helps with their development, the boundaries, the exploration, all of it. They learn self-control. Children living with dads are less likely to have discipline problems. This is despite the fact that dads are less likely actually than moms to use physical discipline. And researchers consistently find that fathers who spend time with their children give their children the gifts of self-control and social skills. That is extremely important. What happens if you don't have self-control or social skills? You're probably going to lust after women on the internet instead of going out and meeting actual women in real life. And again, this is not an excuse. There is no excuse for simping. Ever. Don't do it. But we can acknowledge that boys raised without fathers are set up for failure. And again, that doesn't mean that they're always going to fail, but it does mean that they're going to have to overcome a lot more. And the implications of this are very serious. We've talked a lot about that before, along with uh, what's caused the single motherhood rate to increase in the first place. Um, but for now, we're just kind of focused on how it emotionally and socially, basically developmentally handicaps children, but particularly young men. And so then aside from that, we have the declining testosterone levels of Western men. So first we'll talk about some of the things that are causing that, but then we'll talk about why it's bad. So basically, one of the biggest issues with testosterone levels is the amount of stuff that we're putting into our bodies that kill testosterone. And this isn't just the phytoestrogens, this is junk food too. And part of the reason for that is that when you add fat tissue, it literally starts to convert the testosterone in your body into estrogen. But part of that would also be the soy boy phenomenon. Again, right? Ha, soy boy this is a funny meme, but there's truth behind it. Basically, soybeans contain high amounts of phytoestrogens, which are organic compounds that mimic the female hormone estrogen in the human body. And in animal studies, they've been shown to reduce testosterone levels. And research from the Department of Nutrition at the Harvard School of Public Health found that men who ate at least half a serving a day of soy had on average 34 million fewer sperm per milliliter than those who skipped soy. Side note, sperm counts have decreased 60% in the last 40 years in the West, not just because of soy, but while we're on the topic, I feel like it's important to note. Also important to note is that menopausal women not take Taking hormone replacement therapy are often advised to eat soy rich foods such as tofu to help reduce menopausal symptoms such as hot flashes, flushing, night sweats because they contain high levels of phytoestrogens which mimic estrogen in the body. Now, you may have noticed that this trend is somewhat new, but it's been on the rise. Like, for example, Soy Foods Association of America reports that in 2013, the industry totaled $4.5 billion, which was up from just $1 billion, like 17 years earlier, and that more than 75% of customers view the product as healthy. And this, of course, coincides with the rise of vegetarianism, veganism, the abandonment of meat because it's evil and unhealthy and destroying the planet. The same people who are saying this and advocating for you to switch to soy. These are the same people that would benefit from a generation of weak, depressed, feminine men who need the government to provide for them because they're too frail and pusillanimous to do it for themselves. Much to consider, right? But even more alarming is that they're pumping this stuff into babies. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, about 25% of the formula market in this country is soy formula. And that's just of, as of like 1998. 
But don't worry, like it doesn't matter that toxicologists estimate that an infant fed exclusively soy formula receives the estrogenic equivalent of at least five birth control pills every day. It's like whatever, right? Research also shows that soy milk and soy formula contain up to 4,500 times the level of phytoestrogens found in cow's milk or breast milk. But it doesn't matter because cows are like causing global warming or something because Greta Thunberg told me so. And you've also got stuff like phthalates, which are found in a lot of personal care products, flexible plastics, including uh, food packaging. And a major study in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism found that they have been linked to significant declines in testosterone in both men and women, including a 29% reduction in boys between the ages of six and 12. But don't worry, because they're found in your mac and cheese and your deodorant too. But why does testosterone even matter for men, right? You know, you've got these feminine, low T, low energy men that occupy the left, and they'll tell you that it doesn't really matter, but it really does. It really does. And you should be alarmed that the average testosterone level in men has been dropping 1% every year for a few decades now. This means that a 40 year old man in 2010 has a testosterone level that is 20% lower than a 40 year old man in 1990. So it's like, okay, well, what happens when you have low testosterone? Well, you become depressed, you get fat, then the increased levels of fat tissue on your body literally convert your testosterone into estrogen. And that creates a feedback loop, which is why obese men tend to have below average testosterone and above average estrogen. But you can actually reverse that feedback loop by taking steps to naturally raise your testosterone, which will then start to eat away at the fat and then continue raising your T levels, et cetera, et cetera. But low testosterone means low muscle mass. It means that your bones are weaker. You're more frail. It means that you lose your drive to gain power and status. It means that you're less dominant. It means that you're literally bad at getting birds. Bro, the birds are cringing at you, bro. Go home. Like basically having high testosterone will improve every aspect of your life as a man. But here's something to think about. Just because you're weaker, let's say you're afraid of competition, you don't succeed at competition, you don't succeed with women, whatever it is, that doesn't mean that you don't still have an instinct to survive. So if you're a man who is strong, capable, confident, ready to compete, you know that your best case scenario is going to be in a situation where you are free to reach your own potential without anyone getting in your way or holding you back. Conversely, if you're a man who's not strong, you're not confident, you're anxious, you know that your best case scenario is going to be in a situation where the outcome is equal for everyone. You know that equal opportunity isn't enough for you because you can't compete with more capable people, but you still have that instinct to survive. So you advocate instead for a system that is going to produce the best results for you, which is a system not of equal opportunity, but of equal outcome. This is why feminine men, men that we would call beta males, soy boys, whatever, this is why they tend to be on the left. Same thing with attracting women. They can't compete against competent, cunning, strong, confident men, so what's their approach? Well, sweetie, I actually have your best interest at heart because I believe in equal rights for you. I'm a feminist. Please date me. I'm a nice guy. It's cringe and it doesn't work. Ladies, if you're listening, if a guy ever tells you that he's a feminist, he's lying to you and you should point and laugh like, but, but I'm a feminist. Ha ha ha, simp. And just so we're clear, you can believe that men and women are equal in the sense that neither is better than the other without being a feminist, which is what most people believe nowadays anyway. But now you've got a generation of weak men. They're not socialized. They're not confident. Now, this could in theory be corrected if there wasn't something enabling the propagation of this behavior, but this is where social media comes into play. Social media is where most of the simping comes into play. Social media enables these men to hide behind screens and interact with women artificially. Social media is what enables girls to post pictures of themselves and wait for their orbiters to feed them external gratification. And again, we might do one about the thoughts in the future and their problems, but for now, let's just focus on this. Everyone knows how to be nice, right? And everyone knows how to be mean. You don't need to be socialized to know that, like in the sense that you can either shower someone with gratification or with hostility. And there's nothing wrong with being nice to a girl, but for a simp, that's all that they have. They overcompensate for their lack of drive, their natural swagger, if you will, lack of ability to compete with, well, I don't have to compete, I'll just be nice. I'll orbit her, I'll give her attention and compliments and money and everything and eventually she's gonna remember me and she's gonna wanna be with me. Like, get a grip, man. Women don't like nice guys. Men like nice women, but women do not like nice guys. And again, that doesn't mean that women don't like it when guys are nice, but women don't like guys who are nice guys. Do you get it? And the reason for that is that Happiness is linked with your level of agreeableness, and your level of agreeableness is linked with your income, your status, your dominance, etc. Women don't want a yes man. Women don't want a guy who is not dominant, who's making less than they are. It's not attractive. In fact, women say happiness, which is linked with agreeableness and being nice, is one of the least attractive traits in men, but men say it's the most attractive trait in women. But with pride, it's the opposite. Women view pride to be the most attractive characteristic in men, but men view it to be one of the least attractive characteristics in women. 
And the reason women want men to be prideful is because if he's got pride in himself, chances are he's got a pretty good thing going on. He's confident, he's capable, he's smart, etc. This is why there's that stereotype of, oh, women only date jerks. It's like, yeah, sometimes, but there's more to it than that. If you want to attract a woman, make yourself better. The only woman that should ever love you for who you are is your mother. Other than that, women are looking for strong men to be strong husbands and strong fathers. They don't give a damn if you're quirky. Oh, you're a guy, but you just love puppies. and You're super nice. And yeah, no one cares. No one wants those genes, frankly. Women want validation, and that validation should come from them being able to get a boyfriend or a husband who is a good man. But now, they don't have to do that because they can extract superficial validation from simps on social media, and those simps were never socialized because they didn't have a father present. No one taught them how to talk to girls. They're very feminine because of everything else that we've just gone over. It's really just not a good situation. These men never learned from their fathers that they're not fragile. They never developed properly, and that's why they stay on the internet. This is important because rejection shares brain patterns with physical pain. Secondary somatosensory cortex, dorsal posterior insula. This is why socialization is important because you're learning that you're not fragile. You're not afraid of that pain. You don't fear rejection. And this isn't even taking into account the problems caused by feeling rejected by parents through divorce, the trust issues. We're not even talking about all of that right now. This is why if you look at the biggest dating apps, whether it's Tinder, Bumble, Match, whatever, they're all dominated by men because men are using them as a crutch. The same reason why these guys are showering these women with compliments, paying these e-girls just for paying attention to them. It's pathetic, truly. Being a simp means that your value and your identity is predicated upon a woman and the attention that she gives you based on this mindset of scarcity of, well, I'll never attract any other women, and that's probably because you have no value. You were never taught to value yourself, but more importantly, you were never taught to make yourself someone who you would value. It's like gambling. It's exactly like buying a lottery ticket. It's the same philosophy of, oh, maybe this time, maybe this time. I don't have much inclination to pursue something real because I'm doing this on the side and it's productive. Trust me, it'll pay off for me eventually. Just you wait. No, 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 it won't, my guy. Cut it out, stop simping now. There is no excuse. We won't tolerate it anymore because the only thing on this planet worse than a thought is a simp. Get it together, man. Stop eating literal estrogen. Start eating eggs and meat and fish. Start lifting weights. Start doing high intensity cardio. Figure out what your goals are and then go after it. Stop simping. Stop watching porn. I mean, like, do you think that's a coincidence? Oh, a few generations raised without proper male influence to socialize them and teach them self-control. Now they're afraid to interact with real women and they're addicted to porn. Wow. Truly weird. Very peculiar, right? You need to stop orbiting these women online. Delete your dating apps. Stop commenting on girls' Instagram posts. All of that is an elaborate cope, my friend. No woman that is worth making into a wife is going to unironically be on Tinder or posting thirst traps on Instagram, and that is just a fact. That's what we mean when we say no e-girls. It's not a joke, and the e-girls cannot stand it because their only agency is their sexuality. They have decided that their purpose in life is to be a promiscuous, degenerate person, and when you resist that, when you tell the e-girl, no thank you, bye, she can't handle it. This is the nobility of Thought Patrol. This is chapter six, because it's like, they've decided that their self-worth is to be derived from male attention because it's empowering because being a slut is empowering. Yeah, no, it's not. Sorry to burst your thin bubble of feminist theory, but living your life as a sentient fleshlight isn't actually empowering, which is probably why you're so depressed. But seriously, to every man out there who's not a simp, who focuses on his responsibilities, being himself, being active, interacting with real women, it's your job to bully the simps. We need to correct this behavior, and the only way to do it is to bully them. We have to stand in solidarity as men and bully the feminine men until they either get it together and, dare I say, man up, or they shut up entirely and stop speaking about how masculinity is toxic because they think it'll make girls like them. And you know the saying, Weak men are creating bad times. So let these bad times turn you into the strong men that we need to bring back the good times. Men built the society, and if men aren't there to maintain it, it's going to collapse. We need strong men, we need strong fathers, and we need to bully anyone that tries to subvert that. Any man that tried to subvert that by saying, well, toxic masculinity, I would never be mean to you. Please date me, please spare some affection. They need to be bullied, not out of hatred, but for his own good, and for the good of our families and our society. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel down below. Hashtag bully the simps. Hashtag bully the simps. Oh, you didn't hear me. Allow me to repeat myself. Hashtag bully the simps. It is not a bumper sticker. It is a lifestyle. It is a creed, and you must live by it, or else things are going to get worse. That just seems to be the trajectory of masculinity in the West. So, thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.